Hi all and welcome to the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. Right, 2020, oh my. Just where do you start with a review of this year? So much has gone on. Well, I started to do the normal way we have done these reviews this year. And I realised I would need probably 8 to 10 shows to cover this past year alone. Some said THI would not top last year. And that took 5 review shows. Well, judging by the feedback, we blew that away this year. And we started off the year with bi-weekly shows as the narrative was getting thin or repeated. And I felt, as many of you have now got a better grasp on the knowledge, truth and wisdom of our shows, that it was time to rerun the From Russia With Love series again with some added bits. We also added a rerun of The Clowns in Panic, which has become all too clear and eerily right on the mark from the date of the original show in June 2019. Following what turned out to be a wheat and chaff event in early May, we kicked into gear big time from then onwards and shows became more voluminous and got deeper and deeper. And the question remains is, have you all decided on your favourite show yet? Or did or does that alter by the week? In May... We delivered the ultimate in ET disclosure shows called The Events That Changed the World, which went into a three-part series. For those still asking for ET disclosure, that first one was it. It was the official Majestic 12 document that documented the recovery of two alien craft in 1947, of which occupants were alive in at least one of them. You cannot get more detailed disclosure than that. Also in May, we launched a new series called Exposé Shows, which have now reached six episodes of very detailed information, largely focusing on the COVID fake crisis and all of its anomalies, that we have all found out this year. We also went deeper into many groundbreaking topics, including the one-on-one with the one, with a two-part series called You Are Not Ones and Zeros. That series went deep into the core of everyone. It covered religion, astrology, the way fiction becomes fact in various TV shows. It covered the Saturn-Moon Matrix, the Egg Timer or Hourglass Effect, females and the moon and the cycles they create, what is organic humans, the G-Cloud, ETs and their varying functions and skullduggery. In part two we went deeper again into time, water, 85%, bots, AI and the finger of God. Binary codes, computers, Desi Mal, calendars, moon cults, and the fall of the female again. The six pointed star symbolizing the fall of man into the Solomon and Ra based cults, witchcraft and the hex, which is a spell, and the code sequence of the hexagon, all leading away from the one on one with the one. We also covered in that show how America was once split into three separate bodies of land, Norwegian gods, runes and giants, Camelot and King Arthur and the explanation of the sword and the stone. Soul development creates the sword and the concept of external becoming the we, not the I, and the internal becoming the I and not the we which is all about self-mastery. As the year developed, we waited long enough for the From Russia With Love 9, and more material became available to support the 10 episodes of From Russia With Love 
to then create From Russia With Love Plus. Now, to date, we have done three more episodes, the first of which was World Hegemony, that covered the rise in dominance of all global affairs, businesses, trades and society structures by what is known as the Jewish group, but these people are not Jews. They are off-world pirates, by and large. In part two, called All Lives Matter, we went deeper into the human abuses, eugenics, experimentation and MK Ultra, all committed against we the people, with a common theme of those involved in part one being prominent again. This was a Rockefeller-based document who funded Margaret Sanger and the Planned Parenthood group which is not about supporting mothers and babies, but taking babies live or otherwise and using them for genetic databases and various other heinous acts. We showed of how this was a largely white-based eugenics program that came out of the National Zionist Germany, same people, the same program. We showed where the funding came from and where it went all the universities, colleges and hidden science centres known as research centres when all are actually death centres of plotting against humans. They were crying over and about overpopulation back in the 1920s and some earlier. I guess his story always repeats itself it seems just like a loop movie. And the message was it was important for us all to come together. In part three, called The Dutch Connection, we covered things about Holland and the control system that is barely mentioned outside of this show. When often the talk is of Rome, the British Empire, but the hidden roles of Holland, and more so in some cases France as well, rarely gets a mention of their roles in and of this global control system. The De Beers, Rothschilds, Dutch Royal Family, Roosevelt's, Vanderbilt's, Habsburg's, House of Orange, Dutch East and West Indies companies all played major roles in the past in many countries. India, New Zealand, Asian and Polynesian islands, Caribbean and the West Indies Islands, African countries and in particular South Africa and also Ireland, who still to this day blame the British people. But the great untold story is their role they played in colonising America, the biggest of which is what is what we know now today as New York, formerly New Amsterdam. Many of the names of the places in New York, like Harlem and Bronx, were formulated by the Dutch pirates of the sea that came onto the land. The Dutch role in the slave trade via the Indies companies is also often overlooked, all of which was funded and supplied by several Jewish ship owners. We also found out that the Dutch have a deep state also. Their involvement in Operation Gladio in league with with the CIA, P2 Lodge, Mossad and other rogue elements of the intelligence cartel. The other show we did tipped a few people upside the head was when two worlds collide. That was quite a show that involved multiple topics from loops, hourglasses, one-on-one with the one, G-clouds, 26 races and their genetics, Triality, Constellations, Visiting Worlds, the Looking Glass Technology and the Narrative of the Three Worlds, not two, left much to ponder on. We'll be back shortly. The progress of the TPC this year was a vast change from last year in terms of donations in and support out. The donations were seven and a half times last year's donations and in fact in three consecutive months earlier this year each month collected more than the whole of last year. 
Now donations took a drop a bit after the split in May and the people's funds were divided per se. But I'm delighted with what we, we received and also the fact we were able to help some people within the THI group at important times for them this year. Some got help with mortgage payments, some got help with dental, some got general help due to illness and we also helped one of our members who was bed bound get out and about in a motorised wheelchair. And I want to say thanks to all who donated to the TPC. Many people helped this year. But I want to say thanks to a few that went beyond the call. Stephanie, Rebecca, Nancy, Nicoletta, Perla, Myra, Willow, Jessica, Ilana, Brian, Melody, Ramona, UA Association, Nathan, Dean, Phyllis, Michael, Ruth, Christine, Vishkan, Judy, Leslie, Thomas and Carol, who all put in larger amounts this year, but thanks to everyone who put their hard-earned money into the TPC. Now we started off uh, the year in the bank account with $5,300 and ended up with 46000 in the account. And I want to set a challenge. Let's us see if we can improve that next year and expand outside of THI donations as most people can afford a few dollars a month. It's barely missed. Now we had a new director appointment this year and it was a popular choice with the members of I Started It, Michelle Hansach. And we are delighted she's on board with Holly and I, even though the two of them give me grief. Uh, it's still good fun. We ramped the, revamped rather, the TPC website this year and we'll be looking to build the TPC web shop for next year and invite members to sell their goods with small commissions going to the TPC. I also did two videos explaining the reason for the TPC, our vision for it and our plans and solutions to fixing not only the problems in America, but around the world. Now some people think it will take too long to build, yet have waited many, many years for trusts, OPPT, RVs and the collateral accounts all to no avail. Some of those turned out bogus and one is blocked by the system and is ongoing. But we cannot wait around anymore. We have to build for our future regardless of any bonuses coming from the trust or not. The idea is to build a people's platform as somewhere for the people to turn to and support, whether for law issues, financial support, personal support or just a safe place to go. By building the People's Club with many thousands and then millions, we will then have a People's Forum, a voice, platform and force for and by the people, which is something we the people have never had in our history. The TPC will always be a teaching course of how to be, act, work, business and engage in a better way that pays the path for the People's Club members of the future to be involved as our own politicians and be involved in think tank decisions to support the government, not fight against it. We change the government by taking personal responsibility for ourselves and helping others. We change it by our actions of being better people, not with violence, abuse, destroying properties and angst, but with a clearer and more adult-based thinking, then we the people can all bring about the change we all wish to see. The directors for the fourth year running received no pay from the TBC despite funds being available to all three this year. January through March, 
the Shia oversaw the battle on the banking levels, esoteric levels, hidden war levels, and a warning in January the public war was about to break. Debts were called in on all banks and the Rothschilds and Black Sun groups. The outgoing Bank of England Governor Mark Carney confirmed as much. He said central banks globally are getting close to running out of tools should they need to tackle another serious economic downturn. That was a warning of what was to come. We got confirmation the Dark Prince was gone as well as what is known as the Dark Destroyer added flavour to the mix of things were finally starting to turn. Our own successful revocation done on December the 21st last year and again this year both were successful also tipped the scales our way in other fields of operations. The World Horror Organization Director General Dr. Ted Ross told reporters that misinformation was making the work of our heroic workers even harder and then claimed that almost 25,000 died or were dead in the Hubei province which is Wuhan and the region where the outbreak was first reported which has since become the epicenter of the virus. Later times will prove that wrong. By April, when China added 50% to their death figures in one day, bringing their death toll to 5,100. Yes, you heard that correctly. Perhaps Mr. Ted Ross was being ironic when he claimed of misinformation, and it would become a common theme throughout the year. Then in February... The mainstream media claimed 1,000 Wuhan residents were dead, provided no proof whatsoever. But I thought the World Horror Organization guy said it was 25,000 dead. I guess they're all part of the John Hopkins Math Center. In February, we did a piece highlighting the severe poverty for the majority of the Jewish people. Rarely has this been covered in the mainstream media, or the alt-media for that matter. And it highlighted several groups of Jewish people, all living in poverty, no matter where they lived, be it in Israel, Spain or America. Whilst the select few who operate under the banner of Jewish harvest and own vast riches, not one of them sharing it with their own people. To them people, you see, all people are there to be harvested. The so-called God's chosen people. Who can't be bothered to care for their own. You see, to them, we are all Goyim. Lower caste Jews as well. Then in March <clears throat> came a public message from Kim, the trustee. And she said, people only talk about people who are actually doing something. They do not discuss ones who are not moving. The most heavily attacked persons in the alt media are Thomas Williams and myself. How hard do you think it is for us to sleep or do anything but work? Why? because we have a moral obligation and all of this rests on us at least in the beginning before the large funds. So I could care less about the hate campaign coming from self-proclaimed Rothschild coven members or pedophiles or Nazi black son von Reitz. As a matter of fact, I would thank them. Why? because if these two murderous covens are sending their shills into alt-media after us, and mostly only us, then that means we all here at THI, the People's Club, are the doers. Oh, and may God source bless them the way they have blessed us, peace, 
strength and love to all. We will prevail. Oftentimes I wake up with a song that comes to mind and this was one from the other day and to my friend Thomas Williams who has helped the team more than you know has been a friend to me through all the attacks not Facebook banter people who hide behind a computer but real physical attacks, spiritual attacks and also personal attacks who is also willing to lend an ear to anyone in need not just me, and is sharing of his time for hours on end each week, teaching us and helping us grow so we are ready for this new beginning we are experiencing now. We love you all, let the haters hate and stay strong, she said. March saw the clown-led stock market slide, which garnered 1.87 trillion all of which was returned to the trust. Those funds are now out of circulation as they require new allocation numbers, which the clowns block. All orchestrated out of New Zealand by Commander Barack Obama. The world's monetary funds are shrinking was the message in March, and a chief economic advisor at the time confirmed it when he claimed the world's monetary supply was down to between 40 to 60 trillion, which is a staggering drop from the 123 trillion global GDP from recent years. 50 to 60 percent less money in circulation is a massive problem for the clowns, as they need more money than the people do. It costs $14 billion a day to buy off and run the American government alone. The Feds attempted to launch the Phoenix currency based on funds looted out of the stock market into private hidden accounts to bail out the country and stimulate the markets. Anyway, that failed. The Black Sun tried to use a financial system built in 1923 to hide funds stolen out of the stock markets and other accounts to supply funds to those who wish to buy up America for pennies on the dollar. Every hidden account of theirs was located and removed, so that failed as well. Then after... Spending many months warning of 5G was not designed for what all the other alt-media people were stating. We revealed their first mass use of it in what became known as the Great Toilet Paper Chase. As 37% of bots all ran out at the same time, and commandeered all the toilet paper, their propensity for stupidity would increase as the year went on. Those using a 5G phone were hit with subliminal messages to buy toilet paper. But does anyone stop and think any more of what they're doing? A virus that doesn't cause the shits only sniffles of a cold variety and people were rushing out and buying toilet paper like it was going out of fashion. Now this was ran in America only and the outcome of it is of those that use 5G only 37% bought into the subliminal message and that was a massive failure from their perspective as they expected near 100% and so that failed as well. March the 16th Kim arranged a number of transfers for a number of differing projects with the government and so now it is a case of wait and see who plays. That turned out to be the day that changed everything for the rest of this year. March the 16th. 
Five days later, the Rothschilds and the Black Sun declared private martial law. Not public martial law, and we wondered what would unfold. Late March, I was led to write a piece on the two worlds again. Given in 2020, I forecasted we would see more and wrote this in a portion of it. And I wonder if that became more obvious as forecasted from the late March show. I said we have spoken in length about the two worlds existing side by side and it has many levels of operating and understanding, not just one. Their world and our world on a base level is about how people act, think and be. And the differences now are marked. Even the masses are waking up slowly to that. On this level it can be seen as wake and unawake, but most are not aware of the other levels of being awake are, and subsequently hit a glass ceiling. The sleepers will feel, and in fact many of the awake people will feel, that they have taken the easy way out by just ignoring things. So people have two choices, to learn the hard way, or the easy way in life. Too many think they chose the easy way. Time will show and they will find out they never. It will be brutal, the new learning for those people. We then put out this story, which is a source of debate around these parts, as no definitive proof was given to the country. The Black Rock Group are putting heat on the government and they raised a total of $62 billion between them to buy up America and sell to the Chinese consortium, not the government, for $2 trillion. What is the figure of the stimulus bill? $2 trillion. Are you seeing the picture now? Tuesday of that week, Democrats tried to renew a contract for the Fed, if failed, trying to create the digital dollar. That failed, and now a Marshall Plan is in the stimulus bill. The $500 billion within that bill was for the Fed to bail out the banks and liquidate things. That same week, Kim arranged for a deal with the US government for two and a half trillion for a range of things that we have covered in previous shows and told Mr Trump how to deliver it. The funds were transferred plus the 2% trust fee separate. That fee is paid by the trust for administrative costs. And we waited and we waited and the hacking blocks went on and so the funds were not released and were all pulled back. Except the funds did not come back. It funded the Fed takeover by the BlackRock Black Sun Group, which was also celebrated by Trump, the Q Group, and also by QAnons but not THI members as we knew different. The knowledge base of all other groups on many levels are way behind the regular THI listeners and that gap then was alarming and has at least and has since got worse. We moved into (coughs) April And I did this piece. I detect quite a disappointment amongst many of you in regards to Mr. Trump and Q of links to BlackRock and the taking over the Federal Reserve. With the obvious links to the Black Sun elements, even Anna Von Reitz called that out as well that week. A few things come from this. People will ask, does Trump know about the Black Sun? The answer is yes, 
and we have made him aware of those facts. Is Trump aware the Federal Reserve is defunct and has no license since 2012 and cannot print dollars? Yes, again, we have made him aware and also shown the papers proving it. People will ask, have I changed my stance on Trump? I will say what I've said previously in many shows, that I will support Trump or anyone operating for and by the people. And I have repeated that consistently. Then in April, they started with the COVID nonsense. They established the social distancing rule, which is the exact same measurement of when people are buried. Coincidence? I think not. And what I said at the time is this is a direct attempt to install more control on the person and the mind. It will become a theme and a meme for bot-like people to follow beyond the virus fear-based period ending. And this was to stop the clockwise-based energy flow currently going on and being spread amongst the populace. Cut off the connections and send us back into the anti-clockwise flow which is harvesting the energy. So they set the gaps between us again in a classic divide and conquer program and even reintroduced the masks because the old ones all failed. It's symbolic and in your face. Then in April we revealed the day of the Sfarog. And Levishoff dates of the night of Svarog was from 6496, which is 988 AD, to 7504, which ends the night sometime between 1995 and 1996. So it was said that the night ended in 1996. But what if it was not 1996 and actually 2020? There was a discrepancy of 24 years. So if you add 24 years to 1996, it equals 2020. But if you add 24 to 988, it equals 1012. So to those who believed, and Levishoff was one of them, that the night and day was a thousand years a thousand years from 10 12 makes it 2012 but the actual length of the day and night of Svarog is 1008 years not 1000 so 10 12 plus 1008 years is 2020 and the day of the Sfarag started on the first equinox, March the 21st, 2020. Which is why the pagan, Wiccan and other rogue elements who are dark forces declared their secret martial law on the very day of Ostara, which was later to be Christianized into Easter, and the fake Jesus story of dying for three days and ascending, which is the three days of darkness. That three days of darkness and the Jesus story is December the 21st through the 25th, not March. In April, I, I said, I remember in the past people complaining of me always speaking of the hidden war, all taking place behind the scenes. And many were asking, when is it going to become public? We want to know and see what is going on, people said. 
But I did warn, when it goes public, you may not like what you see. I warned back in December things were going public. I warned it would get ugly. I warned news and media would make no sense, no matter who is speaking. And I asked the question of you all, is did and has those things now come to pass? And then we exposed the snake oil snaking law Jared Kushner who was running counter financial operations against the country in April and we outed that he's now running FEMA via his own manufacturing and supplies business now the Trump White House had set up an official coronavirus response team Jared Kushner has decided to set up a second coronavirus response team of his own and is making a complete mess of things and leading to even more confusion when it comes to the Trump team's failed efforts. On Monday of that week, this is early April, having last week blocked the company, the American company, 3M from supplying to this country privately and also told them not to supply to Canada either suddenly struck up a deal orchestrated by Kushner to supply health related items like masks, gowns and other medical supplies which all sound so nice until you realise the on only the government and their departments could sell or receive them this was the first week in April. Attorney General William Barr late Wednesday suggested that the federal government in May should begin relaxing some of the quote draconian unquote wouldn't be the first time we heard that word and certainly not the last time this year social distance seeing restrictions imposed throughout the US so William Barr was saying we need to remove it by May oh my perhaps he forgot to say which May and then we took a look at Mr Mnuchin's economic skills another one out of the John Hopkins Centre of Matt's retardedness and the Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin on the second Sunday of April said that he expects Americans to be able to survive for two and a half months on just $1,200 which is about $17 per day except it turned out to be not 1200 at $17 a day but it turned into 35 weeks and $4.89 a day up to Christmas Eve. And then we reported this. One day this month, April, there was supposed to be a ceremony based in Russia with Trump Putin and other leaders to attend where Trump was to be crowned to lead the new world order and a week or so ago we were notified of the changes and that Macron of France has now been installed in the lead role which was confirmed in meeting with the Pope this week and we said their plan, in case people are not aware, is one world government publicly. But they have already done it in private decades ago. One world currency, which will be crypto, ran without banks, only computers, phones and later microchips. The world of religion will be revamped. Out will go Christians, Muslims. Buddhism and all other religions will be wrapped into one world religion 
and the key to it all is the one main missing religion, Hebrew, or better known as the Jewish religion, except it's not their religion either, but off-world programs ran on humans. We rolled into May, and the US unemployment rate has risen to 14.7%, with 20.5 million jobs lost in April. The real jobless total at that time was 40.3 million. And the rise means that the jobless rate is now worse than at any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. And since this fake pandemic began, the US has suffered its worst growth numbers in a decade and the worst retail sales report on record. Just two months ago, the unemployment rate was at 3.5%, which was a 50-year low. And then we got a report from, on the hospitals in May. America's already ailing hospitals are being pushed even further into financial ruin, threatening to force a growing number of them to file for bankruptcy or even close. The onslaught could result in some $202.6 billion in losses for hospitals across the country by the end of June, according to the American Hospital Association. And with millions already jobless, California's pandemic-induced recession is on pace to shatter previous downturns and could lead to a record $54 billion dollar budget shortfall according to state officials and then the hidden messages started to come out even more cyber experts in May slammed the crime minister Benjamin Netanyahu for his proposal to microchip children who return to schools and kindergartens as the coronavirus lockdown is lifted. Yes, it was lifted. And then we had Gates, B. Earl Gates, and MIT. And we revealed they are currently developing the human implantable quantum dot vaccination delivery system which is described as a tattoo for the hand, which will include our identification mark and vaccine records. And then we reported it needs an enzyme called luciferase. Luciferase to make it work. Andrew Kumo, clown, we reported when he stated at an April 23rd press conference that was reported on in May, sounded indignant when a reporter asked if anyone had objected to New York's policy of forcing nursing homes to admit recently discharged COVID-19 patients. Kumo replied, they don't have the right to object. That is the rule, and that is the regulation, and they have to comply with it. That wouldn't be the last shit Kumo talks this year either. And then we got involved with the Department of Defence who outed themselves as being involved in the COVID nonsense as well. And this statement was attributed to Lieutenant Colonel Mike Andrews, who is the Department of Defence spokesman. And he said, Today the, the Department of Defence and the US Department of Health and Human Services announces a $138 million contract with Appyject Systems America for Project Jumpstart 
and Rapid USA, which will which together will dramatically expand U.S. production capability for domestically manufactured medical-grade injection devices starting by October 2020. Spearheaded by the DOD's Joint Acquisition Task Force in coordination with the HHS Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, the contract will support Jumpstart to create a US-based high-speed supply chain for pre-filled syringes beginning later this year by using well-established blow-fill seal as aseptic plastics manufacturing technology suitable, it said, for combating COVID-19 when a safe and proven vaccine becomes available. $138 million contract. This is in May. Who's to say it was going to go on for longer than a few weeks? But they knew. Now part of this Apiject syringe it says it comes with an optional yeah right RFID NFC tag on each BFS pre-filled syringe Apiject will make this possible they said BFS blow fill seal and then they said before giving an injection the healthcare worker will be able to launch a free mobile app. <laughs> yeah, apps. Uh, had enough of apps this year. <laughs> and tap the pre-filled syringe on their phone, capturing the NFC tag's unique serial number, the GPS location, and also the date and the time. And the app then uploads the data to a government selected cloud database. Aggregated injection data provides health administrators an evolving real time injection map. Uh, <laughs> it's like a giant pin the tail on the donkey game that is using people instead of donkeys. Then, in a surprising move, or perhaps not, perhaps it was an indicative move, the CDC suspended its collection of data for this year's flu season, prompting many to wonder just why they would make such a decision, according to the St. Petersburg Florida attorney, Rogan O'Handley, and he noted that during the prior two flu seasons, it, the CDC, collected data from the 1st of October 2017 to May 19, 2018 and September the 30th, 2018 to May the 18th, 2019, respectively. Noting that for some reason they stopped collecting data this year on April 4th which was the lockdown day. And then we got another story in May confirming what I'd said all along of what 5G is really all about. Microsoft has proposed a method to generate cryptocurrency by monitoring people's brain activity and other personal biometric data. The new patent titled Cryptocurrency System Using Body Active Activity Data describes how a person could attach various sensors to their body to earn cryptocurrency through a process known as mining. Mining cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, 
typically involves devoting vast amounts of computer processing power to solve complex mathematical problems. Perhaps John Hopkins should get one. And Microsoft Patent sets out an alternative option for mining cryptocurrency by instead doing it through a human body activity associated with a task and monitoring the outcome with biometric sensors. For example, a brainwave or body heat emitted from the user when the user performs the task provided by an information service provider, such as viewing an advertisement or using certain internet services, can be used in the mining process, the patent explains. And then we wrote this, which will take us into the music break. The main problem this planet has currently and applies to the governments, common or natural law, or the constitution advocates, and also Kim, is that all suffer through a lack of enforcement. And when you have small groups like that, the only way of enforcement is hiring a group with weapons to car carry out the said enforcement, as there is no valid alternative. But here is the kicker. There is a scenario whereby you can have enforcement without weapons. It's called sheer numbers of people, power, all back in the same cause and that is why we are and have to build up the people's club network ran for and by the people currently we have no voice only small pockets here and there and easily divided by the narrative fed or a lack of will by the people but the TPC wishes to combine the people in every state and country and provide the platform with which ultimately by sheer numbers the people will have a voice with or without weapons. Sheer force of numbers all singing from the same sheet will tip the balance of power back to where it belongs. And then we came to June where I personally delivered a small tiny parcel to a rather surprised THI state group in Arizona in the first week of June uh, that was a lot of fun it certainly was and then we came back and I did a show and said that I would be a group that I would be social distancing is, and this also comes with a clear warning, is mask wearers. And I said your grandchildren will look back at you all and revel in your own stupidity. Viruses and bacteria thrive in warm and wet conditions like mould in your bathroom, for, a, for a, an example. Plus you are refilling your lungs with carbon dioxide and a lot of you are going to have long term health issues going forward. The tighter the mask, the worse your conditions. And so I decided that I'm social distancing all carbon dioxide breathers as a protection of my health and away from their bot like stupidity. And Yes, the taking the knee came up again. Like a past episode of The Simpsons so often does, this is a social conditioning event, and now you should realise that the taking of the knee was preparing you all for a future event. Remember, it was prevalent in uh, American sport, and there's a lot of issues over it, and then came the other events. 
The very fact that it was highlighted so much in the media should have warned people this was being introduced ahead of an event. That event was George Floyd taking the knee from the establishment. And I said whether he is dead or a part of the plot becomes irrelevant. It was and is pre-orchestrated as their previous programme, which they warned us of in 2017, was beginning to fall apart. Taking the knee is their piss take on the people, regardless of colour, and the people fell for it again. To add to their piss take was that George Floyd said, I can't breathe, which is symbolic of the masks. Now, taking the knee is not symbolic of showing support for your country. Neither is the flag or the anthem. It is symbolic of bowing before your fake gods, royals and jackass elites, better known as curtsying. Like the term knee capping, with no knees you drop to the floor in submission to your master and this is them reminding you that they are in control and we are all slaves. With the knee bent, it bends the hamstring and has hamstrung us all. And the great question I asked is, whilst you are bowing to your country and leaders with the knee, I ask, what has your country done for you? The Senate Foreign Relations Committee in June quietly passed a bill to give Israel a minimum, yes, minimum, of $38 billion over the next 10 years, despite the ongoing devastation to the U.S. economy caused by, allegedly, by the coronavirus. Now, the bill was passed by the committee under two unusual circumstances and with almost no public awareness, just like the Patriot, create a distraction and sneak it through clandestine bills. Now the first unusual act is the Senate Committee Chairman Jim Risch of uh, Idaho refused to allow a live stream of the meeting despite the fact that the Senate Rules Panel had recommended that extra efforts to be taken to ensure public transparency, while the Capitol is closed to the public and the presence of reporters is severely limited. The Senate's Press Gallery Standing Committee of Correspondence had objected strongly to Risch's decision, and second, the bill was passed Listen closely. The bill was passed without being named, debated, or even discussed. Even though it would set into law the largest such aid package in U.S. history. June also brought the long intel piece from and about the Rothschilds' top family members torturing and mind-controlling the younger ones into doing heinous acts against their will. The machine they were using called the Ark was neutralised as no further requests to help them came after that intervention. Now, there was later claims from another show that the top Rothschilds were all dead as of December that was proven as a false statement. We end the tune with something that we should all abide by. You cannot forgive if you don't forgive yourself. You cannot trust if you don't trust yourself. You cannot fully care for others if you don't care for yourself. You cannot think for others 
if you don't think for yourself. You cannot soothe anger if you don't restrain your own. You cannot heal your inner if you continue to project outer. You cannot request change if you don't change yourself. Ascension is an inner process, not an external. You cannot hope to achieve high consciousness with lower vibrational actions and thinking. You cannot heal the planet if you haven't healed yourself. You cannot love if you don't love yourself. Not loving yourself leads to a heart of stone and the Excalibur sword. We all have the potential of holding becomes only a self-cutting tool. We rolled into July and I said, imagine if there was a lockdown for stupidity. Imagine if there was a vaccine against stupidity. Imagine if there was an app for stupidity. Would there be or would we notice many changes than currently? But imagine if there was an app for karma. How suddenly things would change then. But then the question would be, why can't you self-regulate your own behaviour? Imagine if there was an app for service to others. How different the world would be. Then in uh, July, THI Texas, having done a brilliant presentation and charted their path on their projects, were now ready for launch. And as of Wednesday that week, they launched TPC Texas as an official business. Now they in part have some of their own funding and the TPC will be available for small donations to help them and we wish them all well. And then we were into New York. Facing pressure from thousands of constituents calling to defund the police. Decentralise. New York City slashed $1 billion from the police budget. But some city lawmakers and the protesters calling for change think the cuts weren't sweeping enough. The City Council approved the $88.9 billion 2021 budget late on a Tuesday night, early July, while hundreds of protesters, all bought and paid for actors, many of whom have camped outside the City Hall for a week, waited to hear the results. So having defunded the police, shootings in New York City increased by a massive 358% within the week compared with the same time last year. There were 12 shootings during the seven day period in question last year, while this year has seen 55. More than 70 people were wounded in the 55 shootings with at least 19 injured on Saturday alone when the city saw over a dozen incidents, most of which occurred in the Bronx. Now, in one of these incidents, a man died after being shot in the neck while washing his car. And then we revealed more about Operation Blackout. I think we first revealed that in uh, one of the expose shows in May, which likely prevented that event taking place. Now, Operation Blackout was a 2019 exercise simulating sabotage of civilian infrastructure, terrorism and psychological operations against American citizens on the day of the U.S. 2020 election. The private U.S.-based Israeli-founded company Cyber Reason 
organised it with members of the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, the FBI and the US Secret Service and also the law firm Venable. That will come up again later. Or maybe tomorrow, uh, the next show. Cyber Reason is led by ex-members of Israel's military intelligence 8200 unit who is best known for its cyber offensives against other governments and is advised by a former top and current officials in both Israeli military intelligence and also the CIA. In addition, it is funded by and partnered with top US weapons manufacturer and government contractor Lockheed Martin and also financial institutions with clear and direct ties to the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and also the White House advisor and the President's snake-in-law, Jared Kushner. Cyber Reason CEO Lior Div has openly admitted that he views his work at Cyber Reason as a continuation of his service to Israel's intelligence apparatus. The Israeli Cyber Reason has discreetly become a major software provider to the US government and military through its direct partnership with Lockheed Martin, which followed the defense company's decision to open an office at the Israeli military's new cyber operations hub in the Negev desert. Boggles the mind. There was a banner that was flown over an English soccer stadium in July stating White Lives Matter. And it was condemned by the media, the coaches, the players and the government as racist and inappropriate. The bot elements of the public jumped on the bandwagon as it it is herd mentality with them, all condemning it. The non-thinking people have bought into the most idiotic repeat-after-me script ever. Apparently, white lives don't matter. Apparently, yellow lives don't matter. Apparently, native lives don't matter. And apparently, Hispanic lives don't matter either. Only Jews and black lives matter is essentially what the increasing idiotic and desperate media and authorities are telling us. And some chip on the shoulder jackasses are going along with it. The black lives matter is another distraction and has all the hallmarks of the Jewish persecution and Holocaust programming. And I made a direct statement. The term Black Lives Matter is an out and out racist statement. And the reason I linked it with the Jewish Holocaust programming is you are the only ones persecuted. Check. We need reparation money. Check. Said reparation money or donations doesn't not go to either peoples. Check. Are you seeing the pattern now? Over $100 million was collected for Black Lives Matter and the bulk of it went to the DNC party. Oh, the irony of that. And again, a giant piss take on the black people for falling for this rubbish. Remember, the militia arm of the Democrat Party was called the KKK. And then we got a report that nearly one third of American families have been unable to make full housing payments for July. A new survey has revealed as the US economy struggles to bounce back from the crushing coronavirus losses. And then we exposed the masks and the lockdown. 
according to the EPA. The air inside your indoor environment may be up to eight times more polluted than the air outside. This is the EPA. Indoor biological contaminants and pollutants in the air can trigger environmental illness and other health problems. While most deodorizing products mask odors with harmful petrochemical perfumes, adds to the mix. And we ask the question, do you still think lockdowns were a smart move? or part of a fascist regime of controlling the people, thinkers and bots alike. I was called to watch a German series called Babylon Berlin and found some interesting tidbits in that that had proven the From Russia With Love series. Black Reichswehr who were the Black Sun Group. And they were building a German, not German really, a German Air Force in 1929, not in Germany, but Russia. Remember under the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was banned from building up military. Now, they were using stolen gold from Russia and the Tsar Nicholas, and it's actually in the show, and they sent in a shipment of bio-warfare chemicals. The Black Reichswehr, also known as the Black Eagle, were not Germans. And this was an outside plot to destroy Germany after Russia was destroyed in World War I. Why? Because Germany and Russia are linked by the Rus and the Aryan peoples is why. Aryans are not white supremacists. That is a Zionist creation to cause division. And also Hitler was brown eagle, not black. Big difference. In the 1960s we had a combination of two or three vaccines now children in America are having 36 before the age of 6 but we asked if they worked as stated why are so many western people sick including 54% of American children yes you heard that correct 54% And why, if all these vaccines and medicines work, do Americans spend over $3.5 trillion per year on that profession, which is around 18% of GDP? 10% of that $3.5 trillion is on pharma drugs alone, with the average cost per head of capita spent on medical expenses per year now resides at $11,300 per year. Clearly, if all these vaccines and drugs worked, as they say, A, people's health would improve, and B, the costs of the medical would go down, not skyrocket. And then in July, the Japanese professor of physiology or medicine Professor Dr. Tasaku Honjo caused a quite a sensation in the media by saying that the coronavirus is not natural. He said if it is natural, it will have not affected the whole world like that because, depending on the nature, the temperature is different in different countries. If it were natural, it would have only affected the countries with the same temperature as China. That's how viruses work. 
and then we wrote this piece. It seems like, seems Facebook like Microsoft are now deemed as medical experts as they decide what are cures and treatments and Gates decides when the second wave will hit and how life will only return when everyone is tested and then the fake vaccinated. And this is utter madness path we are going down now and has validated the Clowns in Panic show several times over. Covid means clowns own vaccine ID and the 19 is not the date but the number of the letters equaling AI. The economy crashing. That was going to happen anyway. We warned of it years back. They just needed an excuse. With a dwindling pot of real money estimated at 40 to 60 trillion, which is less than half of the global GDP, set at around 123 trillion in recent years, something had to give. With a dwindling pot of money, the supply chain of money had to be curtailed, and it has been. The closing down where all businesses they deemed not suitable went but largely kept businesses that own businesses open, but with restricted access. With less people spending, there is less need for money to flow. Job losses was inevitable, just as we warned. Not enough funds to keep the existing economy going, and if you think it will return to previous levels before March 2020, You need to think again. Seriously think again. Food distribution and growing issues and the shortages we also highlighted as a future issue last year is now taking effect as mentioned earlier. Their solutions? Welcome to 3D printed food now launched in KFC stores which stands for Killing Effing Chickens. Launched, they say. Since when do they just launch things? What that really means is they've been selling it previously and no one noticed. So that is now added to the plastic rice being sold to Africans in vast quantities by China. But with the intel talk of the 30 million dead in China, given in our show in April, and the earlier piece this week of 100 million being evacuated due to floods in China, and then the potential of the Three Gorges Dam failing, with about 400 million people living in the path of the dam. And then when you add in India and China were fighting to the mix, This brings in another solution to their game plan, depopulation. Depopulation is happening due to COVID deaths. No, it was going to happen anyway, as we had warned. But B. Ill Gates has told the world that fact several times, and the bots just sit there in a mental stupor thinking, Uh, I don't think he means us. I think he's talking about foreigners. Uh, No. If disaster does strike in China with a dwindling money pot, shrinking businesses, shrinking jobs, there does arise another issue. Who and or what is going to replace China's current domination of their globally sold products? The supply chain shortage globally has already taken effect and they are blaming the virus. It's not the virus at all. Remember, they, China, are the lead exporter. If they don't have the capacity or funds to produce anymore, who will? America? Not likely any time soon. Where are the manufacturing and engineering expertise going to come from? 
given the pool of those skill sets is minimal in this country due to the 30-year reduction and closure program of manufacturing plants in this country and the continued harvesting by the CIA and their subsidiaries of any type of skill set above service-based jobs. There is left a massive shortfall of people with the expertise to carry out a self-dependency country. With around 80% of all American jobs being service-based, less than 8% being manufacturing, with the Bureau of Statistics forecasting a further fall of around 1% in the manufacturing field within the next five years. Where are the people with the required skill sets in this country going to come from? It is fine stating we will grow or make our, our own products. And I think all countries should be independent on that front. And it encourages sovereignty. But with a populace of low skill sets, we will have the demand, but not the numbers required to carry that supply and demand out. Everyone growing or making their own products would be, be a good thing. As I said, it would end dependency on and to the richer countries and the various bogus trade deals that operate globally would cease, all of which were designed to harvest off each product and country, largely at the behest of the UN, Rothschilds, Dragon Groups, Black Sun and their subsidiaries. So with only 40 to 60 trillion of money flowing globally, and clowns intent on blocking the trust funds because they don't and can't control it, we are facing the prospect of only one third of businesses and one third of jobs operating globally still operating. Our biggest issue we face is the supply of food, with already three billion facing food shortages and starvation that figure will increase unless swift actions are taken by governments. An end to the ridiculous laws in this country where it is a felony to produce your own food, which means we always stay dependent on them. It has not worked out too well for us, has it? By comparison, over 50% of Russia's food supply comes from the people's own gardens. And then we said this piece in July, probably even more prominent now. And it applied to all the organisations in this country and the up and coming job reduction in this country. This is to the organisations who ran the old order control based system. You should all listen with an open mind and think about this country and its people for the first time in your lives. To the CIA 1 through 4, NSA, DHS, FBI, universities, research centres, military bases, mercenaries, the IRS, the Fed, government jobs and all of the military. All of you were employed to run the old control based system, whether you realise that or not. But the old control based system has collapsed and they're building a new, leaner and slimmer one and you lot will not be a part of it. Yes, you heard that right. You will not be a part of it. You will all be drastically reduced at best or replaced totally. All of the above was largely created to run the military arm of the control system. But with less funds and less need to control things now, again, something has to give. 
take into account the US military budget alone. And publicly, it's just short of $1 trillion per year. And the US government is the largest employer in the world by far at 23.5 million. With a bit of common sense applied, it tells you that that system is no longer viable or affordable. The cost for the clowns to run the old system-based American company, not the government, it's an USA Inc., it's a company, plus the agencies and the military is a staggering $14 billion per day. $14 billion a day. They can now no longer afford to cover those costs. So what happens next? The 17 agencies based in the USA were all designed to spy on each other, as our show revealed last year. Everyone was eavesdropping on each other, all designed to keep each other in check at the behest of the controllers and also Kim's predecessor. Why do they need 17 agencies anymore? The answer is, they don't. And they have made strides to replace it with a 100% public-based agency. The NATO handbook and open source details reveals that, all set up by a CIA shell company named OSS and ran by an alleged ex-CIA man I'm not too sure there's any such thing called Robert David Steele and their plan is to make the public become the spies by spying on each other and it says so in their manual and for those of you who struggle to comprehend That means you are about to get replaced with a cheaper system using the public microchips and smartphones. The US military, the DOD and the Pentagon, you're next in line. You are over bloated in terms of staff and expenditures and they've already developed your replacements, NATO again. In the Paris Climate Agreement, all countries who have signed up for it must give 2% of their GDP to NATO. But the Rothschilds are now building up their own private army, which is NATO. With the development of technology, which as some of you know is way more advanced than the public perceive, they will replace all of you with technology. Drones will replace aircraft and soldiers with the robot army already built. And no, they're not like the awkward wobbling bots that they put out in public. They will replace boots on the ground, soldiers and also the police force, hence the defunding line. Machines don't need to be paid or fed, you see. With the advance in technology, they will replace all of you by a handful to run their new operations. You all thought you had the golden ticket and would stay on the gravy train. Newsflash, you are not and will be cast aside as fast as the Rothschilds were out of the Fed. The Facebook Libra Manifesto told you as much if you read with clear minds and understood it properly. The term decentralising does not only apply to removing central banks, but all of you also. Even those of you with several badges of dishonour. You have filled your roles in their game and you are about to become surplus to their requirements. And their next stage is the machine, technology 
and AI. Are you all that stupid you cannot see it yet? Are you still blinded with the promises of cashing in your warehouses full of fake dinars? Do you still think the Russians, Chinese and Iranians are the problem? No, the problem was you lot all along. You fell for your own illusion programs of false promises, fake wealth, fake statuses and now the hammer on you all is about to fall. They warmed us all with the series like Continuum, Terminator, District 9, Westworld and I could go on. And everyone gorged on their ball games and burgers, distracted with global warming and now the coronavirus. The Russians are coming to get us whilst ignoring your own history that those same nasty Russians were the ones who saved your asses twice back in the 1800 wars. They fed, clothed and armed you. I will repeat again, technology overreach is the end of us all. No matter how many fake titles, badges or pieces of paper you have. We stand on the threshold of the greatest leap for humanity and this planet. And all it requires is for the people to see through the illusion and working together to correct it. Technology has a role in our lives, but it must not be allowed to prevail and ultimately control our lives. And the message to the members of the US government, military, agencies, banks and all the old system corporations and subsidiaries are hereby put on notice of your own demise and requesting that you take the appropriate action forthwith. We the people invite you all to engage us and chart a better, fairer, transparent and peaceful planet for us all and we await your input. Break the chain indeed. So we rolled into August and we got a report from the US federal government in collaboration with Yale University and they had held clinical trials to determine what is the best messaging would be to persuade Americans to take the COVID-19 vaccine when it's ready. Plotting. And this came in the same week <coughs> where the Americans trust in the media to report news honestly. <laughs> That's a laugh continues to spiral downwards as 86% of the respondents in a new Knight Foundation Gallup poll say they see either a great deal or a fair amount of political bias. And at this time people were asking my opinion on Trump. And I'll repeat it again. I will always go on what I know in private and certain evidence is now in the public arena. I give my opinion based on what he's doing for and by the people, unlike most others on the internet who are immersed in faction biased reporting, including at this stage the Q group, I will be delighted to be proven wrong on that. But even if I went along with the Q plan, I will always raise concerns and questions when things don't appear to be benefiting we the people. And that is the top and bottom line of this group. It's not connected to any organisation, former or current control based system and groups and it operates solely as a platform for and by the people of all colours, cultures, countries and even religions despite my opinions on those programs. And I said I will support anyone who's doing the right things for and by the people of any country. If not, I will say so. 
as a duty to the people. And then the public, you know, a month after just handing over the largest U.S. aid package to Israel, the public found out in August uh, to be against, or are told to be against China. China this, China that, made the change from Russia. All whilst our government is blatantly funding Chinese companies. Hundreds of millions of US taxpayer dollars went to Chinese companies from the Paycheck Protection Program, which was designed to help small businesses survive during the pandemic, according to a new report in August. August had a major event, and so we come to Beirut, Lebanon. And what we all saw was a massive explosion that rocked the whole city and has killed at least 137 and injured over 5,000 to date. An explosion so powerful that it was felt 150 miles away in Cyprus and has drawn many conclusions and possible scenarios as to how that took place. It was all stated very quickly, perhaps too quickly, a bit like the Christmas Day bombing, of a large amount of ammonia nitrate being stored there from a seized Moldovan ship near seven years ago. But what was not explained is why, after seven years, was it still being held there? Was it a tactical nuclear weapon, as some are suggesting? It's possible. Or a direct energy weapon? Possible again, given yet again there was an aerial vehicle flying past just before the blast. I had kept an open mind whilst having reservations about one particular group or country who could potentially do this. But then the media stepped in with a blatant lie. They said the explosion set off a firework factory nearby, and yet despite seeing several videos, there was no rockets or fireworks going off in the vicinity, as would happen should the factory go on fire or be compromised. So why would they lie? Well, it means they're covering up something else and trying to justify that level of explosion. So I looked into ammonia nitrate, and yes, it's very explosive, as the people near Waco, Texas found out in 2013. But significantly, that blast in Waco, Texas, did not produce a mushroom cloud like in Beirut. And what I found out was that in Beirut there was 2,750 tonnes of ammonia nitrate stored. But in Texas there was 540,000 tonnes. And yet the blast in Texas, despite being 196 times more material was considerably less than the blast in Beirut, which has to raise red flags and several questions. So who or what can be involved here? Well, sometimes the most obvious answer is the right one, but not always. Israel has been at war with Lebanon since the 1970s, and it peaked in the 1980s and has gone on ever since. In a recent show, we had mentioned about a story of alleged Hezbollah stationed in Lebanon crossing the border into Israel and the Israeli government warning them to not retaliate after Israel troops opened fire on them. Just stand there while I shoot you. Does that really sound like common sense? 
and don't fire back. Pathetic. But given that there are three major ports along that coast, Tel Aviv, Haifa, plus Beirut, now the only two ports open are Israeli. Coincidence? And given Netanyahu in a UN meeting in 2019 outlined on the map the very same spot of the explosion of the alleged Hezbollah weapon site, it all seems too coincidental, does it not? And there was a video doing the rounds on social media that week that is portraying a missile caused the second or the major second explosion, which may well be the case, but with CGI these days, who knows? But the Beirut secondary explosion has more the look of a direct energy weapon, of which there was a test of it in Iraq, which is available on YouTube, you decide. And with the world now fate waking up to this fake global pandemic, they always need an event to create distraction. Maybe this is it. And with Netanyahu under fire from his own people, and a distraction needed for that, just maybe 2 plus 2 equals 4. But not in John Hopkins Centre, it's 0.4. And perhaps Mr. Melville and the Trust should reconsider, instead of sending PPEs to Israel, to send them to Lebanon instead. Just saying. AstraZeneca is one of the 25 pharmaceutical companies worldwide already testing their COVID vaccines on humans in preparation for injecting hundreds of millions of people. But these are flush times for Britain's largest pharmaceutical company worth something in the order of £70 million, which is about $85 million. But they have just reported bumper profits of £12.6 billion in the last six months alone. 12.6 12.6 billion in six months. So 12.6 billion in profits. And Trump, armed with the trust funds, sends them 1.2 billion of our money for a foreign based company. But despite its healthy balance sheet, AstraZeneca is unwilling to be held responsible for any potential side effects of its hopeful vaccine candidate. In other words, the company is completely protected or indemnified against lawsuits from people who are injected with their vaccine and experience negative effects regardless of how severe or long-lasting they are. We carried on in August in the UK as the UK went into more draconian and also militaristic style speech patterns of strategic surveillance and drills. And some of their measures defied belief and makes the authorities look like the bumbling script reading fools we all know they are. And they base their decision making on the R factor. But when pressed on what the R factor is, answers are thin on the ground. Now, it has been presumed that it is the rate of infection of the virus. And now those statistics are coming down based on the mystery R factor. They are now ignoring that and basing it on something else. Remember, all the figures were coming down. And so 
new draconian measures considered in the UK are for the lockdown of all people over the age of 50. So it appears that they are looking after the older people, which flies in the face of sending infected people into nursing homes and killing them, like what happened during March, April, May and June. And Manchester was in full fear-based lockdown now, said to be due to a spike. And yeah, here's me thinking the comedic Mr. Milligan died years ago. New tech gadgets now out all very quickly for COVID testing. We did a report on the DNA nudge gadget, which conveniently uses your DNA sample to test for the virus. And I asked, do they really think we are that stupid? Sadly, some are too many. And the test kits they are using, which is proven to test a false positive of 80% plus, which went to 90% plus, are now being increased. And I said the solution to not getting tested is refuse to remove your mask for fear of infection. And so then they can't do the test. And perhaps the R factor stands for retards. Then we have a Jackass of the Week award. And it goes to the University of Georgia. Who are urging students to wear masks whilst having sex. There goes the blowjob. <laughs> and the university reportedly sends out notices to on-campus students. That said they should consider wearing a face mask during sex. Oh my. Heavy breathing and panting can further spread the virus and a mask can reduce the risk. Perhaps the University of Georgia can practice safe sex themselves by going and effing themselves. Just saying. Then we got some good news from Mr. Trump and this was rather pleasing for me to hear as in the middle of August he announced that he was stopping the payroll tax for the people making under $100,000 and also dropped the interest on student loans plus $400 extra on unemployment and I said at the time this has all the hallmarks of working with and listen, listening to Kim the trustee and his music to my ears. Unfortunately, like lots of their other promises this year, it never came to fruition. Then Kim stated that the stimulus bill is coming from an American National Disaster Relief Fund which went from $360 billion up to $1.8 trillion and was witnessed by Trump, Mnuchin and Pelosi. So where did this fund come from? Well, this is one of the many funds Kim and the Trust set up with the dissolution of the former name of the Manor World Holding Trust. And there are hundreds of these funds for various topics set up for each and every country, not just America. And she then went on to state that there is 2.874 trillion equivalent in an account of the same name designated for the people, which was arranged by Kim. For every dollar the government, the American government receives, the people are entitled to the same dollar amount of the funds. She then said the government will get the funds when the people receive their portion of the funds. And I asked the question, which seems to be uh, <laughs> uh, something wrong these days, asking people questions, was to get bad responses or nasty replies. But I asked the question, perhaps she needs to be more clear on how are the government spending their allocation 
whilst the people's is still blocked. No people's money, no government monies should be the directive, should it not. And then we had this news item, and I said it would come as no surprise to our listeners, as the all the usual names involved in it, and more confirms of clowns in panic, the expose shows and some recent op-ed pieces. The nation's, nation's largest private equity firm is interested in buying your DNA data at the going rate of $261 per person. And that appears to be what Blackstone, same as BlackRock, Black Sun, the $63 billion private equity giant is willing to pay for genetic data controlled by one of the major companies gathering it from millions of customers. And earlier that week, Blackstone announced it was paying $4.7 billion to acquire Ancestry.com, a pioneer in pop genetics that was launched in the 1990s, allegedly to help people find out more about their family heritage. Yeah, right. They lie. We had um, snippets from recent chats in August that I thought might be of interest to our wider audience, as not all are on social media. But there was a, a recent storm off the East Coast called Isaias. And I said this may well be more of the symbolic clownery. Isaias actually means... Yahweh is salvation. Oops. And the very fact that the media and the fear porn channel known as the Weather Channel went to such great lengths to tell the public of how they should pronounce it tells you it is a spellcast and or a program where they are trying to get us to call in their fake salvation god known as Yahweh. So I looked it up and looked for more details and then I came across this. The wars in the ninth century and peaceful security following them produced their effects in the latter part of the next century. Cities sprang up new pursuits although affording opportunities of easy wealth brought about also an increase of poverty. The contrast between class and class became daily more marked and the poor were oppressed by the rich with the connivance of the judges. That was 1,200 years ago. So here we are 1,200 years later with the same issues. Greed-based peoples accumulate an easy wealth and those that participate in that then create the consequence of that poverty. The poor oppressed by the rich and facilitated by judges has not changed either, has it? Judges were the priest class then and the priest class now, known as Cohen's. A social state founded on iniquity is doomed, but as Israel's social corruption was greater than Judah's, Israel was expected to succumb first. Now what they're, they're referring to here is the house of Israel, not the country. And then it said this, Greater likewise was her religious corruption. Oh my. Not only did idolatrous worship prevail there to the end, but we know from O.C. what gross abuses and shameful practices obtained in Samaria and throughout the kingdom. O.C. is another name of Hosea. 
whereas the religion of the people of Judah on the whole seemed to have been a little better, Judah was taken over by the house of Israel and became the religion, not of God, although the question is which God, but the religion which means binding of law. Hebrew and its derivatives Talmud and the Torah are all based on law. Not law and justice as we know it, but a group of rules that applies to all of the people except them. Judah becomes Judah, with a H on the end, and spawned the term Judas, and later the term Jew. Judaism means Jewhood. Hood means to cover, and so Jewhood means to cover the Jew. Hood also means gangster, and given the antics of the Silk Road these people controlled, and throw in the Knights of Solomon and Jerusalem, known as the Templars, the description does indeed tend to fit. But to cover the Jew is certainly what applied when other words came out from Jud or Judah, and all are related to law and the priest class who represent them. The words like judges, judiciary, judgment, judicious, Jude X, which means the one who declares the law. Judges in Jewish history refers to a war leader vested with temporary power, as in the book of Judges, from Latin judex being used to translate Hebrew shofet. Now the Hebrew term shofet, which is translated into English as judge, is actually closer in meaning to a ruler and a kind of military leader. And then we have other words that connects to the Jewish law, not religion, with jury, justice, jurisdiction. Now the English term for justice and law was doom for passing judgment. And that adds a whole new meaning to the term Doomsday Book now, doesn't it? Which means it's a book of law. And then you add in the Christian Doomsday narrative of these same people passing judgment upon us. A bigger picture emerges. We know, however, as regards these, that at the very time of Isaiah, certain forms of idolatrous worship, like that of Nohestan and of Moloch, probably that also of Tamur and of the host of heaven, was going on in the open or in secret in the house of Israel. So the Israelis were worshipping Moloch, and most in our circle are familiar with that entity, but who or what is Nohestan? Nohestan is the derogatory name given to the bronze serpent on a pole first described in the book of Numbers, which God told Moses to erect so that the Israelites who saw it would be protected from dying from the bites of the fiery serpents, which God had sent to punish them for speaking against him and Moses. (laughs) Oh dear. The Israelites set out from Mount Hor, where Aaron was buried, to go to the Red Sea. However, they had to detour around the land of Edom. Impatient, they complained against Jehovah, who is Yahweh, 
who is also Anu. And Moses, and in response God sent fiery serpents among them, and many died. The people came to Moses to repent and asked him to ask God to take away the serpents. Moses prayed to God, who told Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he seeth it, shall live. This did not remove the source of the people's suffering. It just enabled them to survive it. And I asked the questions. Seriously, is this the type of God you should be worshipping? And do people not read this shit and go, Wells the Fargo? Sending fiery serpents to hurt the people stated to be the chosen ones over a disagreement. Seriously? This is the fake God you are all not praying to, but being prayed upon. Pray, spelt P R E Y. And what the previous caption told you is, this group of people were Moloch worshippers who sacrificed theirs and our children. Moloch or Molech in Egyptian means owl. And that's why they have the giant owl in the Bohemian Grove and where they sacrifice children. Now there were rumours earlier in the year of perhaps Bohemian Grove being burned to the ground to remove the evidence, but none was more was forthcoming. But this is just like the Temple of Solomon and Herod and also Anchor Wat and all other global temples. And they're trying to build a third temple in Israel. And you have people desiring or wishing for this construction. Do you still wish to follow God? This is not our God. That is the God of the non-thinking and adult children. I'm sorry, but it is. You cannot read these scriptures rationally and think that it's all holier than thou and righteous. It's just not. And it all goes back to Egypt again and their laws, incest, hierarchy, slavery and dominance over the people. Egypt went to New York. Check out Cleopatra's Needle. It went to Utah with a fake Mormon religion. And it went to California where the elites built a hidden pyramid called Opus One. Opus One is all very Opus Day to me. Opus Dei means the work of God. The question is who or what is their God? The answer has many names but for simplicity let's just call it Satan. We're still into August and we're getting near the back end of this show. Um, um, our show's been called, well, certainly the host's been called many names this year. <laughs> and some ignorant people like to uh, shout out for anti-Semitism. Oh, my. Um, yes, we cover the Hebrew Anunnaki who masquerade under the banner of Jewishism. But as a balancer, there's four Jewish people in our group, all of which have sent me messages thanking me for saying what I've said. They have seen through the illusion of these people who call themselves Jews when they're clearly not. I thought that would be a nice time to mention that. 
It was once said that all the world is a, is a stage. And that is correct. But perhaps now all the world is a mask. In a world where they wish to have blanket facial recognition, they now wish to cover everyone up. Does that make sense? Or is it another version of the Ouroboros programs they seem to run all too frequently these days? Of course, the Elites all wore masks for their ritual and sexual festivals for hundreds of years. Masks were worn in a masquerade ball in the 1600s. And the question is, is it a masquerade or a mash charade? The symbol of Ra was the eye and was highlighted with mascara. Masca means to hide and you're left with Ra. And so mascara means to hide Ra. A bit like Islam means to hide Isis. Perhaps this mask charade means to hide the fact they are both losing control and also the plot. Was the art of mummifying done to cover the face? If so, why? And why 3,000 cats mummified? And if so, why? If Yahweh is the salvation, having just done the piece about the Isaiah's storm and then we had the Brussels building on fire which had a sign in a rather obvious place saying the future is here and we asked the question is this why Trump said you won't be seeing me for a while and I asked have the gods returned There was an alleged racial incident in this country that received much newsprint and portal people coverage in January of last year. A certain group of people all jumped on the race card bandwagon. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Kirsten Gillibrand and a certain person by the name of Kamala Harris. All Democrats, all pushing the narrative about racial division. And all of them were quick to denounce the alleged attack on Juicy Smollett without determining evidence. And Smollett himself even went as far as to lay political blame for the event by saying, this is MAGA country, alluding to white Trump supporters. Another New Jersey Democrat used the event to request to pass legislation of anti-lynching. But events of lynching ended by and large in this country decades ago. So why is or why was that bill necessary? Well generally bills with headlines like that have hidden clauses and that may well be the case here. But fast forward 18 months and the media are now pushing a new race car tactic of anyone questioning Kamala Harris is now declared a racist. Rumours of her being the aunt of Jussie Smollett and also her eligibility to run based on being an immigrant have surfaced but none of that is particularly relevant to me, whether correct or not. Can she do the job for and by the people is all that concerns me. But all of the above names were hardly quick to step forward and speak when Juicy Smollett was charged with six counts of lying to the police and staging a fake racial and homophobic attack. And it seems the Democrat Party are running on a campaign of racial divide only. Where are their policies to fix this country? 
were our Republicans' policies to fix this country also. But the staggering hypocrisy of the Democrat Party to run on a campaign of oh the poor blacks and how the whites have harmed them is sickening. When you take into account that the military and defence group of the Democrat Party in the 1800s was the KKK. And at the time I, I asked the black people and white people to come together and condemn these people who are using people for a political agenda. If black lives matter, why are so many in poverty? Where was the concern and care of black people within the Democrat Party prior? What did Barack Obama do despite eight years in office for the black people? Absolutely zero. And yet somehow some people now think it's all going to be so different because Harris is black and female. Oh dear, how the four-year loop memory wipe program works so well on Americans. But lost in all of this is perspective. BLM want to defund cops because they're all racist and violent against black people. The irony is Kamala Harris describes herself as a top cop, whilst flip-flopping between statements of more cops and then less cops. So we mentioned earlier about Operation Blackout, a 2019 exercise simulating sabotage of civilian infrastructure, terrorism and psychological operations against American citizens on the 2020 election day. All run by the Israeli foundry company Cyber Reason, organised with the DHS, FBI and the Secret Service and also the law firm Venable. I said it would come up again later. Kamala Harris married the attorney Douglas M. Hoff, who was at one time partner in charge at Venable LLP Los Angeles office. <laughs> Are you connecting the dots now, we asked. Harris's sister, Maya Harris, was an MSNBC political analyst. Her brother-in-law, Tony West, is general counsel of Uber and former United States Department of Justice senior official. Her niece, Mina Harris, is the founder of the Phenomenal Women Action Campaign, which appears to do nothing more than promote divisive and racist stereotyping and sell t-shirts. Nothing phenomenal about that. Then we had an, an announcement from the World Horror Organization that the COVID-19 pandemic may be around for two more years. Whilst creating a 53-page document issued on how to respond to vocal vaccine deniers. <laughs> Why read or study a 53-page document only for the vaccine denier to tell them to F off bot is both classic and hilarious to boot. 53-page document on how to deal with vaccine deniers. <laughs> and then a Tennessee school district came under fire for asking parents to sign a form agreeing not to eavesdrop on kids' virtual classes over concerns they could overhear confidential information. Did you ever think you would hear that? I 
asking parents to sign a form agreeing not to listen in on kids' classes over concerns they could overhear confidential information. What is so confidential that a parent can't find out what a, a child has been taught? But this is what we know, you see. After significant pushback, Rutherford County Schools is allowing parents to tune in with permission from the teacher, but they cannot record the classes. And Laurie Cardoza Moore, who's the founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, said it's absolutely ridiculous. It's so hy hypocritical because they've been data mining our children for years, complements of common core. What are they trying to hide? What is the problem? Why won't they let us sit in, she asked. Obviously because they're teaching our children pro-pagan da. I'll repeat again for some people who can't say that. Pro-pagan da. That they should be, should not be teaching, she said. They are trying to socialise our children. And she added, we have had a major problem in education, not just here in Tennessee, but across the country, where they are indoctrinating our children with pro-pagan da. Oh my. This is what was stated at the beginning of this year. And perhaps it's not for me to answer. I'll just read it as it came out on the final review last year of what we have in store for 2020. And you can decide for yourself how much of that came true. 2020 was the year I predicted back in 2015, 2016 time of we will see more. That has and will not change. A lot comes down to your perception of what you think you will see. And the physical and inner sight will be more acute next year. Provided you are tuned into yourself and not waiting for the external clarification or justifications, the answers, as always, lies in you. Some will get much of their deep desires this coming year, but many will not. Desires, though, will change over the course of this year, as positioning and posturing to fill some voids will unfold. What is real and what isn't real will gradually come into a deep recognition and understanding this year. Seeing will help with that. Processing can and will be difficult, but deep within yourselves there is an inner intuition that will guide and steer your path. Distractions of events and people will continue to rise next year. There will be many disconnects within your own circles and life, as frequencies and who and what you really are and stand for sheds its final skin from the mask. There will be no, no hiding as much already revealed will become obvious for all to see. Many have exposed themselves this year and particularly heavy within the alt media circus but also all around you. The term used in the show of fact will become fiction and fiction is fact will raise above the threshold for many of you and also the masses may get a healthy dose of it also. The so-called top end people will end their lives, turn on each other badly this coming year, expose themselves more and each other. They will implode and I suspect many former parts of the old system will finally click their brains into something resembling of an adult nature and seek us out for a new path. Immigration of the future will not be country to country, 
but from their world into ours will be heavily prevalent in 2020. 2020 will roll in a great shift and much upheaval in terms of the physical and non-physical realms. For those with seeing abilities shortly you will undergo and see what the real shift is all about. It will be heavy. It requires much and deep processing and can be a lot to deal with. Use the tools you have and the teachings within the show. They are all there and you have far more of the picture and the tools than you realise. It will be important to overcome the fear. Fear helps no one. For those who have done so and connected the sword, connect to your heart centre for a deeper understanding and processing of what you are seeing and experiencing. And yes, it is real. The fear of change can be and will be for some all-encompassing. Holding on to the past will not serve you well and is not conducive when deciding your path. Saying you want a certain path and being contradictory or conflicting from within will also not be conducive going forward. Indecision leads to mistakes. I had done a piece a few months ago about defining, throw into that what is love, what is life and what is real, and repeated today, grasping and understanding those pieces will help you all. You must learn to define what it is you wish to be, do and love. I said THI is unlikely to complete the whole year of continued shows this year, at which point it ends, time will tell, some new hats awaits. The words to observe for in 2020 is shift and phasing. Yet again, time will make less sense. And yet again, the speed up factor of life and events will keep pace or possibly it will quicken or the quickening. The paths and the doorways will be open for those fearless enough to walk them. The clearing of the fog and the mists of time will be revealed to many of you, bringing greater clarity within, of and around you. Love frequency will escalate. Can you handle it? Or will your own insecurities, hesitancy and limitations prevent you? Define what you need and then what you want. If you have what you need, will you define what you want? Be ready and prepared for all possibilities in your lives. Things can, will and likely be all versions of transient this year. Go with the ebb and flow. Retain sanity, calmness and a 45-55 is a must. The old wounds will appear heavily within you. Process them and release them. Forgive yourself and others and move forward. And support as many others on your frequency as possible. This is a must for 2020. The deeper connections with people not based on or in the physical will be enhanced this year. Embrace it because it's more real than our physical understanding, see, feel and recognise the frequencies, embrace them, for they have returned from a distant past. Limitations will not serve you well going forward either. You must expand into a more fuller version of yourself, integrate and assimilate. Nothing in life is failure. It is just another opportunity to learn and grow. Recognising it in that manner decreases the need for fear, shame or guilt. Your journey will not be the same as others. 
Groups are great for the collective empowerment, but remember the journey is ultimately your own only. You cannot drag others on your journey, no more than they can drag you. They can seduce you onto their path, but only you can walk it. Learn to distinguish physical creations and spiritual creations. They are not one and the same. That was the illusion. Illusion will be no more in the next epoch of time and space. The future is not ours to see. Well, some have and some will. And what develops is the future is ours to be. All in all, it was quite a year so far for THI and this is just part one parts two and three follow on Friday and Sunday a year we've been copied validated and a proven leader of accurate information I warned in a show 12 months ago the fight is on and the war will be played out in the public arena here on in and it will get ugly. It did, and it has. And so that warning was an opportunity for us all to prepare yourselves and be ready for all the potentials they could throw at us. Many did, and that pleases me, and some didn't. These are largely the people who point fingers everywhere except themselves. As this is our last show of 2020, it just leaves me to thank all of you for listening this year, the help and support you have given me, and I wish you all a happy, healthy, prosperous, and bot and mask free new year. Let's all manifest a better 2021. This has been the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams. Bye for now.